When I worked for decades on the paper during the segregation era in the South, um, during that time, up to the 60s or 70s, how did the paper handle stories on black people who made news? Uh, about the only time in, in those early days, about the only time that, that uh, black people got their names in the paper was when they committed a crime, and then they would have John Jones Negro, who was never black, was always Negro. And we had a a uh, column called Activities of Colored People, which was written by a black man who had an office down in the uh, black section of town. And he would come in every uh, morning and bring his news of the black community. And then on Sunday, we had a full page of uh, black news, which was called the Black the Negro Page. But uh, as far as running Negro news or black news in the regular section of the paper, it just wasn't done. Uh, we did in sports. Uh, put the results of the black schools uh, games in the paper, but it was done by uh, young uh, students who were in the school. They would call, would call in the results of the game, and we would run a short story that Atkins beat Carver or Carver beat Atkins, whatever the case might be. But <clears throat> but you changed that. Uh, you really went to those black games. Yes, you were the I first did. Wife uh, that really did that. When I came in, when I started working in sports full time. Uh, it seemed to me that, that uh, black parents were as interested in what their kids were doing as, as white parents were. So I started covering uh, the black high school games, uh, particularly Atkins, which was a city high school. Uh, Atkins played their, their, played their football games in the afternoon on a field behind the school. So I started going over there. And the principal, uh, saw me coming, and, and he didn't think it was right for me to be sitting down in the stands for the students. So he took me up to the music room, and they, we had three big high stools that we put in front of a uh, window. And the principal, Mr. Carter, and the superintendent of schools, who was Mr. John Watson Moore, and I would sit up there in those three stools and watch the game. And of course, uh, Mr. Carter was there to let us know who anybody was. If I wanted to know who anybody was, he knew all the students. And I remember one time, uh, Atkins was playing for the state championship. And the visiting team at the half, the visiting team band took so long that the officials wouldn't let the Atkins band play. And I knew the kids had, had a special program made up, and I knew they were disappointed. But the officials said the game had to start or Atkins would be penalized. So the disappointed Atkins band went back and sat down. And Mr. Moore was just wonderful. Uh, he sent word down to the uh, Atkins bandmaster that he was very disappointed that he hadn't seen the band, the Atkins show, and that he would consider it a personal favor if the young men and women from the band would stay after the game was over and do their show so we could all see it. And he said he felt sure that if they announced that, that other people would stay. And the grateful look on those kids' faces when they heard that and saw they were going to get a chance to, to do their show. And it was especially kind of him to do it because Mr. Moore was a diabetic. And to wait those extra 30 minutes that he had to wait to have the, the program after the game was over was a little hard on him. But I thought it was a very, very good thing to do. Your presence meant a lot to the black community on those games. I, I remember uh, an interview I saw with Happy Harrison, who became a very successful uh, player, and he and they asked him uh, about what he remembered in the high school days, and he remembered he remembered you and said that right immediately. Uh, so you must have made a real impression on the black community being there. At the time, I didn't realize. Uh, I just went ahead and did it, and, and uh, these were good kids. They were nice kids. I enjoyed being around them, and, and they were courteous and polite and, and well-spoken, and it was a very, very enjoyable experience for me. And it's only since I <coughs> have gotten a little older, and these well, who were students then have become adults, and so many of them have told me how uh, they would sit on the bench and keep watching the gate to see if I was coming in. I didn't realize it. If I had realized at the time how important it was to them, I think it would have been frightening. I really do, to have, have, any, have it mean that much. But uh, I've been paid a thousandfold back from the citizens of the black community for whatever I did then.